I'm Tom Hollingsworth from Tech Field Day, and I am very happy to have been a part of Tech Field Day exclusive at Cisco Live Global 2021. As you know, we have a long history of partnering with Cisco to bring Tech Field Day to their premier in-person event. And once again, in 2021, we found ourselves unable to attend in person thanks to the current state of the world. It meant that we had a lot more time to focus on what technology can do to help impact the way that we live our lives. Uh, we always say that things like the iPhone and other smartphones have revolutionized the way that we operate in a daily world. But as IT practitioners, what does that really mean behind the scenes? I feel that Chuck Robbins did a great job in his keynote that we live blogged of throwing out some of the key important factors in the way that technology is impacting what we do. It's no longer about the biggest, fastest pipeline to the internet. It's no longer about the quickest web page loading times. We've learned over the course of the last 12 months that technology has a massive impact in what we do and how we behave. And for some people out there, technology is the only way that they can feel reconnected to some semblance of a normal life. One of the ways that Cisco really kicked this whole thing off was with their very first presentation, which came from the Cisco Mass Scale Infrastructure Group. Now, you may not have heard of this group before. It's because this is essentially a brand new organization inside of Cisco that contains a lot of the elements that are part of their service provider organization. These are the, the, the groups that are connecting large infrastructure pieces together that are trying to take our aging optical networks and find a way to modernize them so that they're more accessible, they're more programmable, they're more compatible with the way that we do business now. It's not all that dissimilar from the way that Cisco revolutionized voice over IP all of those years ago when they started using their call manager and unified communication servers to change the way that we make phone calls and uh, send voicemails and chat messages. When you look at the way that we operate in the world today with uh, a, a group, of, a generation of people who would prefer to send text messages and uh, use apps to communicate as opposed to talking on the phone, Cisco was very much ahead of its time as it tried to integrate all of those pieces together. And with the additions of Acacia and other companies that are helping them build out those optical upgrades. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the theme of Cisco Live was turn it up. And I think that Cisco very much is trying to turn that up because it's important to realize that the more interconnected that we can make people all over the globe, the more accessible their applications are, the more that people can become confident in their technology, the more that they realize that the applications that they rely on to do even the simplest of things like being able to have groceries delivered to their house because they're unable to leave, or being able to find an appointment with a doctor without going out and possibly even risking their lives. Those are the things that became more important than a candy game or some other kind of simplistic app on the iPhone. And it is going to require technology companies like Cisco to be able to keep those lifelines open for people. But more importantly than that, it's not just connecting people, it's connecting people wherever they happen to be. And this is one of the challenges that we have faced over the long haul. When you think about technologies like SD-WAN and now the superset of it, SASE, um, it was initially focused on connecting branch offices together. Oh, well, you know, we'll make sure that the headquarters in Houston can talk to the backup headquarters in Chicago and we'll be safe and secure and our applications will be optimized. And then our branch offices turned into our homes. Then we were more reliant on being in our safe places and still being able to do work. But that doesn't mean that we get to build out all of these brand new networks. And my residential connection didn't massively increase during the pandemic. So we need to be able to work smarter. And that's where technologies like SD-WAN come into play. That's where technology like SASE allow my connection here in my home to go to the cloud and be safe and secure and ensure that I'm not, I don't know, transmitting documents that I'm not supposed to send. Well, at the same time, my kids are sitting in the other room watching Netflix and playing video games because, well, face it, they're kind of stuck here too. And we still are able to accomplish the things that we need to get done. 
And that same kind of connectivity applies to the world when it opens back up, because quite frankly, that problem, if you want to call it that, is not going to go away. Now that we've told people that you are capable of doing your jobs from home, how are we going to convince them otherwise? The technology that we've built through SD-WAN and SASE is even more important now that we think about how we're going to do our jobs going forward. And for IT departments, you absolutely have to have visibility into that. It's no longer a question of, we hope we know what the network is doing. It was easy enough when it was one or two networks in your enterprise, a handful of switches and perhaps some wireless access points and an internet router. Now you're managing hundreds or thousands of those devices in some very remote locations from you. You need to know the right information about what you need to see before you even begin troubleshooting. And that's why it's so important the the integration of Cisco's App Dynamics team along with their Thousand Eyes acquisition last year. We saw Thousand Eyes being integrated all the way down to the Cisco Catalyst switch level. That kind of deep visibility allows them to collect the kinds of data that is super important for the people making the troubleshooting decisions, the understanding that the cloud service provider that you're attempting to reach because you need to use this application today at the end of the quarter is experiencing massive networking problems. Maybe somebody made a change that they didn't mean to, but it doesn't mean that I'm not going to pot, put my job on hold. It means that I have to find a better way to fix that. And with the information that you get from Thousand Eyes and with the analytics that you get from App Dynamics, we can hopefully program our networks to reroute packets to make sure that the end of quarter doesn't run all the way to midnight trying to get our last reports done. It means that we can continue to do our jobs safely and securely and maybe a little bit more efficiently now. One of the other things that I thought was very important from Cisco's presentations was this emphasis on security. Uh, more and more, what we're seeing is that we have a dearth of tool sets. We have um, a bag of acronyms that are being thrown at us on a daily basis that we need to keep in mind, whether it's XDR or 2FA or ZTA. What do those all mean? Well, they mean that we need to be safe. Because while we have more tools than we ever have had in the past, that doesn't mean that the number of penetrations, the rate of exploit has gone down. In fact, it's gone up. Because as we develop new security tools, the people that we're fighting against develop new methods of getting around them. And when you look at technologies like the aforementioned SASE or Cisco's SecureX, and the way that it is providing additional data to help you solve these problems, not just the crazy things that are in the corner of your network, but the ever present issues. Should these two servers be talking to each other? Here's a reputation filter for a site that somebody went to. You might wanna take a look at this and maybe do a little user education. Being able to get that on demand at your fingertips, whether it's sent to you in an alert or put up on a dashboard for your SOC is critical. Because the mean time between an attempted exploit and a successful exploit has shrunk, in some cases, to minutes. And we won't know when that shrinks to seconds. And we've seen massive amounts of data being leaked, being sold, being leveraged in the second half of 2020. We don't want that to accelerate any faster than it already has. That's why it's very, very important that you make sure you know what's going on with your security. You also need to have friends. You need to have partners. You need to have the kinds of people in the industry that you can trust to augment your capabilities. One of the ways that Cisco was very forthcoming with this was with HashiCorp. Uh, Cisco Intersight now has a, a significant integration with HashiCorp and they have the single source of trust type database in Vault that you really want to leverage as something that you can build a, a, a solution on top of and ensure that your data is, your users and your data is absolutely safe and secure. And Cisco Intersight is a technology that has effectively no ceiling. Uh, with these kinds of partnerships in play, it can continue to grow and augment the things that we're doing. Another one was Cisco Nexus Dashboard. 
we talk about multi-cloud because we find ourselves involved in it so frequently. I had the opportunity to talk to Ronak Desai of the Cisco Data Center Group. And in our interview, some of the things that he talked about were enabling multi-cloud because so many of Cisco's partners and customers are using multi-cloud, whether they realize it or not. And you may plan to use it, or you may find yourself embroiled in a multi-cloud scenario without even a second thought. But once you're there, what are you going to do with it? And so Cisco Nexus Dashboard Integrator allows you to unify Amazon and Microsoft and Google under one dashboard, one single pane of glass that you can issue policy statements and it will go out and do the hard work for you. And then it will provide you with the analytics and the kinds of information that you need to ensure that your workloads are operating where they should be working, not where you hope they're working. There's a lot of great technology that will be coming out of the, the Nexus dashboard team very soon. And I can't wait to see where they take that. And last but not least, think about the opportunity that exists to modernize the kinds of infrastructure that, we're be, that we've been using for years and not even realized it. Uh, one of the last presentations that we got was from the Cisco Smart Buildings Group. Um, did you know that you could run lights over power over Ethernet? Cisco's been touting it for a while now, and not just little lights either. These are 90-watt PoE LED light fixtures, the kinds of things that you can run a building on. But you also have the AI and ML functionality to know when people are in the building. When are they most likely to come in? When should I turn the lights on? How can I save money here? And by leveraging these kinds of upgrades to what we thought was a, you know, just a, a simple existing technology, it gives us more control and capabilities over what we're doing. If you've ever found yourself waving your hands frantically in front of a motion sensor because the lights went out in the bathroom because you were sitting still too long, what if the system was smart enough to know that you know Tom Hollingsworth has a presence in the building and wherever he is, we can turn the lights on because we know he's still there or a device that he's connected to is still there. That's kind of exciting tech. We also got an update from Cisco's wireless group about bringing hot new technologies like Wi-Fi 6 to outdoor access points. Yes, the outdoors, that place that we get to go back to soon. We get to walk outside and enjoy the fresh air. We're not stuck in a stuffy office. We can work anywhere we want but that's gonna require some infrastructure investment. And we're gonna to need to new, use new technologies like Wi-Fi 6 to ensure that we're capable of getting that work done. But that's not the only thing that we learned at Cisco Live. One of the things that makes Tech Field Day so important to the community is the feedback that we get from our delegates, from the experts that we invite to take part in these presentations. And the themes that our delegates brought up were that the legacy way of doing things is falling by the wayside and that you need to embrace new technologies. Yes, graphical interface on your tool may be very exciting and useful, but where's the API for my programmers? My DevOps team doesn't speak mouse clicks. They speak keyboard strokes and Python. You have to make that accessible for your people. What about modern IP? Yes, that's IPv6. IPv4 is legacy. Modern IP needs to be embraced and extended and celebrated. As we move forward into a new world of multi-cloud and zero trust networking and IoT devices everywhere, we have to have the kinds of technology that we can rely on in order to ensure that our users and our applications are properly connected. The kinds of presentations that you get here at Tech Field Day, you can't find anywhere else because we bring the right people to the right companies and ask the right questions when we see the technology presented. And hopefully what you wind up with is a better picture of the way the technology affects our world. And if you take something away from it, whether you watched live or you catch our on-demand recordings, that you can take back to your company or take back to your team and say, we need to look at implementing this because I think it's gonna make our lives a little bit easier or maybe it will make our users a little bit happier. Then ultimately that's a success because the ultimate goal 
is making everyone a little bit more efficient and a little less stressed out at a time when both of those things are going in the wrong direction. Thank you very much for tuning in to Cisco Live and Tech Field Day exclusive. We appreciate your viewership and we can't wait to see you again at Cisco Live in 2022.